It's a victory Thursday. The legend of Albert Pujols continues to grow as he powers the Cardinals past the Rockies. The Cardinals make another change to the ever-changing bullpen. We've got an update on Jack Flaherty. Harrison Bader says farewell to the fans. And a Cardinals minor leaguer has a game of a lifetime for AA Springfield, all on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm J.D. Haffern. I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, lifetime Cardinals fan, and I am your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio. Follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. We want to thank those of you who make uh, Locked On Cardinals your first listen of the day every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. You can subscribe to it on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you'll find Locked on Cardinals. On YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe and comment so you can interact with us. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. It's a victory Thursday, but let's start with what happened on Tuesday night. Let's be honest, the Cardinals got embarrassed on Tuesday by the Rockies, getting thumped 16-5, to but in the game of baseball, you have to be able to Turn the page quickly, and that's exactly what the Cardinals did on Wednesday. And they actually started the change before the game even began. The team announced that they had designated relief pitcher T.J. McFarland for assignment and recalled right-hander Jake Woodford. Last year, McFarland was wonderful for this team. I loved him for, for this team last year coming out of the bullpen. In 38 games, he had an ERA of 2.56 and a whip of 1.060. Outstanding. Opposing hitters hitting just 237 against him, and he was a ground ball machine for an infield that featured three gold glovers. So it was kind of ideal to make the uh, the opposing batters put the, put the ball in play and put it on the ground. His ground ball percentage was 62.3%, and he induced 12 double play balls, including the famous one against the Cubs at Wrigley Field, where they pulled off the 3-2-5-4-2-8-6 twin killing. That was one of the craziest, most absurd, and most exciting plays of the season, help them keep their late season winning streak alive. Uh, I'll put a link to that play in the description below on our YouTube page. Danny Mac with a wonderful call on that one. Still still gives me chills. If you go back and watch it, just get Bader's involved. Like it's so good. It's so great. You gotta you gotta click the link below and uh check it out for yourself just to kind of reminisce about the fun times, not only of last season, but also with Bader, who we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. Now, the team re-signed McFarland in the offseason to a one-year $2.5 million deal, but this season was a different story for TJ. The 10-year vet struggled at times to, to get a grip on his sinker. Opponents are hitting 323 against him. His ground ball rate dipped to a career low, 53.4%. His whip skyrocketed to 1.622, and he spent most of the season with an elevated ERA, which rose to 6.61 after his appearance on Tuesday night, where he threw two and two-thirds innings allowing two runs on three hits, including that mammoth 495-foot two-run shot to the left-handed hitting Ryan McMahon. He wasn't getting the ground balls. He wasn't getting strikeouts, which, to be honest, wasn't really part of his game. That's not really his thing. And so the Cardinals decided, yeah, you know, let's just cut bait. We'll have, to, we'll have to pay his remaining salary if no other team picks him up, which leaves Genesis Cabrera and Packy Naughton as your lefties in the pen. But you've also got Zach Thompson, Someone that many fans want on the big league roster. We've had plenty of comments and suggestions that where is Zach Thompson? Why is he not on this team? TJ sucks and all of that. <laughs> Just fine. You're more than welcome to leave your opinions uh, down below and, of course, on Twitter. Um, but he's still an option. He, he's down in Memphis, still an option to bring back up at some point, which I'm, I'm sure will happen. Now, the team did recall Jake Woodford, and according to Derek Gould of the Post-Dispatch, Woodford increased his pitch counts and used the schedule and innings of a starter to sharpen his slider and other pitches. Instead of appearing in short 30 pitch outings, he was able to extend his work and throw more than 20 sliders to work it into the shape desired by the Cardinals. 
He threw six shutout innings in his most recent start for the AAA Redbirds. In July, he had a 2.12 ERA in 17 innings and struck out 15. Jake Woodford's a, a good pitcher. Um he deserves to be on the major league roster. I think uh, he just kind of lost his spot. We they've got so many people now that there really wasn't a, a space, a spot for him. There wasn't space for him in the bullpen, definitely not in the rotation. So he just had to kind of wait his time out at Memphis and he's thrown well, he's done everything right. Kept his head down, kept moving forward. And um, he's back with the big league club. Uh, the Cardinals continue to try and trim the fat, if you will, in the bullpen, having already moved on from Nick Whitgren in July. Drew Verhagen has been injured, but uh, he wasn't pitching worth a poo anyways. Uh, they traded Johanna Oviedo, acquired Chris Stratton. Uh, they've tried guys like Junior Hernandez, James Nail, who's been pretty good. Uh, Angel Rondon, uh, Zach Thompson, obviously. They bounced Palante back and forth between the rotation. He was, he was out there last night in Colorado, and uh, they've bounced him between the rotation and the bullpen this year. And now McFarland is out and Jake Woodford is in for now. Now, real quick, we unfortunately didn't get a chance to see Jack Flaherty throw last night for Memphis due to Mother Nature being a B.I. Uh, rain, once again, being an issue. So uh, they'll play a doubleheader today at AutoZone Park, and Jack will get the starting game one. He is scheduled to throw between 30 to 35 pitches. If and when Flaherty is able to return, it has been said that he would be used in the rotation. So Dakota Hudson, who's getting the start today in Denver, you, sir, have been put on notice. They need to see more out of you. And I've said it since Flaherty went on the injured list the second time this year. I will be pleasantly surprised if he comes back and contributes this season. But can you imagine? Let's just put our wishful hats on for a second. Can you imagine the boost to that rotation if a healthy and confident Jack Flaherty, like they had in 2019 and part of last season, comes into the fold? Wow. It's a nice dream to have, but I'm not I'm not getting my hopes up. <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not going to do that cuz that just sets you up for disappointment. So, let's just take it easy, take it slow. On the field last night, we saw the legend Albert Pujols lead the charge with some special moments yesterday as the Cardinals opened an offensive can of whoop ass on the Rockies. So, we'll swing into our game recap next, but speaking of special moments, at BlueNile.com, did you know you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic, a timeless jewelry piece, all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler? Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, clarity, as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring, and each ring is one of a kind, just like her. Whether you're customizing an engagement ring or designing diamond stud earrings, which I I've never worn earrings, but some guys can pull it off. Some people look cool with it. Uh, online jeweler Blue Nile going to allow you to create a, a bigger, more brilliant piece than you can imagine at a price you won't find at a traditional jeweler. They've got expert advice 24-7, which is always key because... We're all on different time zones. Like every, you know, people are on the East Coast. Some are on the West Coast. Some are in Hawaii. I mean, you got to be able to talk to people, right? So that's great that they have that 24 7 legendary service with 30 day returns. You get guaranteed service and repair in WO style for life. That's right. For life. If you need it fast, in most cases, Blue Nile can deliver overnight. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile anniversary sale how about that you can save up to 40 percent on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25 percent on engagement ring settings plus every single order is insured chips free and arrives in dis discreet packaging excuse me they won't give away what's inside so do the smart thing shop stress-free and find your forever piece go to blue nile.com today So after getting pummeled on Tuesday, the Cardinals didn't waste any time in game two of the series on Wednesday to respond as they taxed the Rockies starter Kyle Freeland for five runs in the first inning. Uh, in yesterday's episode, we were talking about the struggles that the 
leadoff position for the Cardinals. Now, neither Tommy Edmond nor Dylan Carlson have been very good batting leadoff. Yeah, they, they, they had not performed all that well at the top of the order. But I did say that I would be intrigued to see both switch hitters hit one and two in the order in front of Goldie and Arenado. And wouldn't you know it, that is exactly what manager Ali Marmol put out there yesterday. Although I prefer Edmund hitting first and Carlson second due to the fact that if Edmund were to get on, he could steal you a base, which he did last night. Um, Ali had him flipped. He had Dylan lead off, Tommy batting second, tomato, tomato in the first inning. But it worked. In that first inning, it did work. Carlson leads off the game with a six-pitch walk, which is great. But looking at the graphic about where the pitches were as far as the strike zone, none of them were strikes. And Dylan swung at two of them anyway. He's got to learn the zone better. And he's got to be more patient up there, in my opinion. It would make life so much easier for Dylan Carlson if he just took a couple pitches. You don't have to try to jump on something when you're up 2-0 in the count. Okay? Let it come to you, man. Let it come to you. But first inning, he walks, okay? So give him credit. He does walk. And then Edmund swings at the second pitch, which, again, I wish Tommy Edmund would take a few more pitches and just let the pitcher come to them. Don't try to jump on him. Don't try to be too aggressive. You're not Paul Goldschmidt, and you're not Nolan Arenado. Stop acting like them, okay? Let the pitchers come to you. So he swings to the second pitch, and he grounds into a force out for Carlson at second base. Tommy safe at first, though, because of his great speed, and that's when the big boys come up. Goldschmidt singles to right. Arnado doubles to left, knocking in Edmund for his 70th RBI of the season. He got a one nothing lead for the Cardinals. Then Albert steps in, playing in his 3,034th career game, which tied him with Hall of Famer Ty Cobb for fifth most in MLB history. And he rips a single to left, scoring Goldie, 2 to nothing Cardinals. Then it's Tyler O'Neill, who I told you is starting to figure out that swing. He smacks a double into the left center gap. Arenado scores three to nothing Cardinals. Paul DeYoung. Paul DeYoung. Oh, my gosh. What a game for him. Gets into the mix. Next, grounding one in the hole between short and third. Albert scores four nothing. Yachty comes up, gets hit by the pitch on an 0-2 count. So he trots on down to first base, which brings in Lars Newtbar who has been scalding the ball recently and crushes one to center that is caught at the very, very beginning of the warning track in center by Randall Gritchick. O'Neill tag scores 5-0 Cardinals. Carlson then flies out for out number three. So the Cardinals bat around in inning number one, and they never look back. The Rockies get a run in the third, but the Cardinals answer back in the top of the fifth when Paul DeYoung doubles, followed by a Molina single to left making it 6-1. to one. The Rockies answer again in the bottom half, making it 6-2. to two. But in the top of the sixth, that is when we got some real fireworks. With two outs, Nolan Arenado takes a knuckle curveball from Austin Gomber. That's right, the same guy who was traded to the Rockies for Nolan to bring Arenado to St. Louis. Ends up tagging one over the left field wall to make it 7-2. to two. Arenado's 23rd home run of the season, an RBI number 71. That ties him for sixth in the National League. With the Dodgers, Freddie Freeman, and the Brewers, Rowdy Telez. And then it was history time. Number five, Albert Pujols steps to the plate. And after an amazing eight-pitch at bat that's on foul off seven pitches, including six in a row, Albert catches an Austin Gomber slider over the heart of the plate and unloads for a no-doubter. 412 feet into the left field stands for career home run number 687. He's now nine away from tying Alex Rodriguez for fourth on the all-time list at 696 and 13 away from that magical number 700. I would love to see him get there. And I think everybody, I think the whole country would love to see him get to 700. But at the very least, we hope that he can catch A-Rod at some point this season. 700 is going to be a bit of a stretch. He's going to need more at-bats. But uh, back to the game. Albert's eighth home run of the season. Gives the Cardinals an 8-2 to two lead. They add another one in the ninth win. Paul DeYoung singles and then scores on Lars Newbar's second triple of the night. I was unaware that Newbar ran as well as he does. I really I really hadn't noticed. I mean, I knew he was a good athlete, but I, I didn't realize how well he actually runs. The Duke, Duke can move. Uh, Chris Stratton, damn glad to meet you, comes in, and he looks shaky, uh, to say the least, in the ninth inning. He allowed three runs on five hits to make, to make the game 
look closer score wise than it really was. Nine to five was the final. Uh, Jose Quintana in his second start for the Cardinals. He looked fantastic. He and Yachty, they got something. They, they communicate well. They look good together. He spent six innings, allows two runs on seven hits, but strikes out six. Grabs his fourth win of the season, but most importantly, he's now 2-0 as a member of the St. Louis Cardinals. Andre Pallante tosses two shutout innings, allowing just one hit, one hit, strikes out three. He looked fantastic, and then Stratton mopped up the rest, although he didn't look very good doing it. They even had to get Helsley up at uh, one point in the ninth inning when things started to look a little bit hairy. But lucky for Stratton, he was able to get out of it and uh, buckle down and ended up uh, closing out the game. But what a solid rebound. After Tuesday's hiccup for the for the squad, DeYoung, four for five. He, he's almost – that's how bad he was early on this season, by the way, is that he's still not hitting 200 yet. Even after his recent success, four hits last night, he's hitting 191 on the season. So he's creeping towards what they call the Mendoza line of 200. Uh, should get there pretty soon, but he, he looks great at the plate. It, it's been a real joy to see Pauly D back playing with the club and playing with confidence. I love it. Albert Pujols, four for five. Arenado, three for five. Newbar and Molina, two hits apiece. You got uh, hits from Goldie, O'Neal, Edmund. Edmund steals a bag. The only one left out of the fun yesterday was, you guessed it, the leadoff hitter, Dylan Carlson, who goes 0 for 5 with a walk. Now that walk, obviously very important there in the first inning to get things going, but 0 for 5. His average is now at 237. And some are suggesting in our comments section that we should move Lars Newbar up to the leadoff spot. Now, Newbar has been hitting 333 in his last 15 games with an OBP of 426. That's what you like to see out of a leadoff hitter. I'm all for change. And one thing about Ali is that he isn't afraid to shake things up. He likes to play the people who are producing. I just don't know if we're going to see it yet. Um, the team is still winning for the most part and not sure they're going to move Lars out of that spot yet. He's been batting in the ninth hole, which you got to remember after the first inning, the leadoff hitter, it's not really the leadoff hitter usually anymore. Sometimes they come up to lead off the inning, but it's the, you know, it changes throughout the game. And Lars has been hitting in the nine hole and he's getting opportunities and he's succeeding. So part of you doesn't want to move him around and get him out of a different, you know, out of what mindset he's in right now at the plate and then move him to a different spot where he's got to change things. So you got to be careful. But we'll see if the Edmund and Carlson struggles continue. And if they do, I'm sure, I'm sure Ollie won't hesitate and will we'll make some sort of change. Uh, Pujols homer in the sixth inning off of Austin Gomber makes Gomber the 448th different pitcher that Pujols has homered against. That is one shy of the major league record held by Barry Bonds, 449 for him. Uh, with his eight total bases, he moved within 16 of tying Stan Musial for the second most in major league history behind only Hank Aaron. And up next, we're going to jump into um, a goodbye, a, a heartfelt goodbye. Former Cardinal Harrison Bader says goodbye to the fans. And one Cardinals prospect, boy, did he have a night that you won't believe for AA Springfield. We'll get you uh, all the stats and the info coming up next. Now, it doesn't matter what time of the year it is. Losing weight is something many of us think about. I'm at the gym yesterday. We're in the back end of summer. And I'm sitting there looking. And I'm like, gosh, man. I I've got, I've got I've got this extra poundage right here, and I want to get rid of it. And a lot of us have different reasons that we want to shed pounds, whether it is that it's summertime and you want to be out at the pool with your shirt off, or um, you got an event coming up like a wedding, holidays are coming up, you want to look good for pictures and whatnot. I get it. Did you know the key to sustainable weight loss is actually through your liver? The liver is the body's metabolic furnace it's responsible for flushing out harmful toxins and igniting your fat burning metabolism but thanks to modern diets rich in unhealthy processed foods and constant exposure to thousands of man-made and environmental toxins most of us have overworked livers but now it's easy to rejuvenate your liver health and reignite your metabolism thanks to liver health formula by pure health research liver health formula contains eight liver boosting super nutrients all of which work together to wake up your sluggish liver and turn it, switch it up, turn it into that toxin flushing and fat burning machine. The bloated belly, gone. 
Don't have to worry about it anymore. No more uncomfortable digestion. No more feeling tired and low on energy all the time. And best of all, Liver Health Formula makes it easier to maintain a healthy body weight long term, which is great because you want the consistency. You know, you don't want to be up five pounds one day, down seven, going back up. You, you don't want to fluctuate. As a listener of Locked on Cardinals, you can try Liver Health Formula risk free today and get a free bottle of Curb Fit with your order. Now, Curb Fit is a safe and all natural appetite suppressant, making it easier to say no to the naughty foods, the pizza, the snacks, all of that stuff that is. Granted, delicious, but is the stuff that's adding the extra weight onto you, making it difficult for you to maintain that body weight that you want. This makes the perfect complement to liver health formula. So go to getliverhelp.com backslash MLB to learn more. Again, that's getliverhelp.com backslash MLB to try liver health formula completely risk-free and claim your free bottle of curb fit with your order. Go to getliverhelp.com backslash MLB now to get started. Harrison Bader is now a New York Yankee. The fan favorite was dealt by the Cardinals at the trade deadline on August 2nd for left-handed pitcher Jordan Montgomery. The deal came as a shock to most of us, considering we hadn't heard any rumors whatsoever about any deals, not only involving Bader, but with the Yankees. So um, Bader, obviously injured right now. He's been on the injured list, battling that tough case of plantar fasciitis. But as much as us fans... We get, we get attached to the players. The business side of things sometimes takes over. And the former third-round selection was packing his bags and headed to the Bronx. But the New York native is heading home. Don't forget about that. Some people may not know. Bader, even though he looks like he's from California or Florida, he's from the New York area. So it's kind of cool for him to get to go back home to New York. I, I'm, I'm sure he, he's feeling ecstatic about the chance to finally suit up and wear the pinstripes of the Yankees. But he posted a really cool video on his Twitter page thanking the Cardinal fans for all of their support and how much he enjoyed playing in front of them. He definitely looks funny. Had to, had to chop off all his hair. So he's got the haircut. He's clean shaven now. But I'll link the video down in the description below on our YouTube page for you guys to check it out. But it, it was a really sincere and really well thought out goodbye like it, it like had mixed in highlights of his time with the cardinals and um bader was always a fan favorite favorite and he always will be we're always going to like harrison bader he had the hair the flair the speed the defense the arm the power like he, he's a five tool guy he's not outstanding at you know the hitting side of things defense obviously gold glove winner he's amazing in center field but he, he's a five tool guy but i think what fans love most about him and what I loved most about him was just his um, his clear joy while playing the game. Like, he always looked like he was having fun out there, you know? And, and it's a game. And the guys are supposed to be having fun. Some people just don't show emotion that way. Bader was all emotion, whether it was excitement, disappointment. Um, it was great. It was great. The fans, and, and they, they just loved his clear joy for the game and his energy that he displayed when he was out there. So... Obviously, we wish best of luck to Harrison Bader with the New York Yankees. Uh, if the Cardinals do have to face him in the World Series, I, I hope he doesn't have a hit and makes all sorts of errors <laughs> selfishly as a Cardinals fan. But um, Harrison's one of the good ones. So best of luck. Again, we'll put that link down below on our YouTube page. And also a quick congratulations to Chandler Redmond. Who? Chandler Redmond. The Cardinals infield prospect for AA Springfield went bonkers last night he hit a solo home run a two-run homer a three-run bomb and a grand slam to complete what is called the home run cycle i didn't even know something like that existed i've never heard of somebody doing it and there's a good reason for that because it's only happened one other time and it was in the modern era of the game the name was tyrone horn july 27th 1998 for the then Cardinals affiliate AA Arkansas Travelers of the Texas League, it's never been done in the major leagues. The home run cycle, a solo, a two run, a three run, and a grand slam. Redman 
You're probably unfamiliar with him. He's not a top 30 prospect. He was a 32nd round pick in 2019 out of Gardner Webb. He had five hits on the night, four of them home runs. He knocked in 11 runs. And it reminded me of the Mark Witten night in Cincinnati. Remember they had that doubleheader? Witten in the second game pops four home runs, drives in 12 against the Reds. Just awesome. Just awesome. So I'll put that link down below in the description as well on our YouTube page. Because I want you guys to see this stuff, man. It's just amazing stuff in the game of baseball. But uh, that was cra that's crazy. <laughs> Chandler Redmond, man, Go going ham. Uh, Cardinals and Rockies again today at Coors Field. It'll be a an afternoon game. You got a 2-10 start central time as they try to take two of three in Denver, which was always the goal. Yeah, I mean, you want to sweep, but you want to at least get two of three. So let's hope they can pull that off. Dakota Hudson. At 6-6, six and six, we'll get the nod against Herman Marquez, who was 6-9. Now, Marquez has an ERA over 5. And at home, he's even worse. He's 2-5 and five with an ERA over 6. So he's much more hittable in Denver. So go after him, boys, except for Dylan Carlson and, and Tommy Edmond. You guys just wait it out a little bit, all right? Take some pitches. Make him come to you. But the rest of you, happy hunting. Go get him. Um, Lineup-wise... Lefties and righties seem to hit him equally. So you might see Dickerson, Donovan, Gorman get a start today. You know, the Cardinals still hold a one-game lead over the Brewers. And uh, the Brewers came back yesterday on the – oh, so upsetting. Uh, they come back and hit the home run in the ninth and then win it in extras. Oof, disappointing. But anyway, Brewers are uh, coming to St. Louis this weekend. So it might be good to get some of these other guys in the lineup today, like Dickerson, Donovan, and Gorman. Uh, just keep them fresh. Keep them, uh, keep them sharp. So uh, we'll see what Ollie cooks up. Uh, thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen. Now make your second listen to Locked On MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully, brings you the humor, the passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. I'm J.D. Haffron. Once again, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Give us a follow on Twitter, LO underscore. Cardinals, we, we got a bunch of followers yesterday. I want to keep that going. I want to get more followers. I love it when you guys interact with me during games. It's, I have a, an absolute blast talking to you guys. It's it's great to hear your thoughts and your takes on on what's going on. And uh, we go back and forth, and we had a good one. We had a good uh, interaction last night, so let's keep it going. So uh, follow on Twitter, also at JD Sports Radio. Make sure you're, you're following, you're liking, you're subscribing, you're commenting on the YouTube page. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason, and we'll see you next time right here on Locked On Cardinals.